Tottenham, Osasuna, Cretone, Liverpool, Leverkusen, Paris, Marseille, Milan, Madrid, Munich, and Manchester. All places in which the cup has landed. On one side, the Red Devils seek to turn the cup over to their side of the city. On the other, the villains and their fresh ownership seek their first trophy. The Miguel Calzada Cup for season 21 comes down to tonight. Manchester United. Aston Villa, 
coming shortly. I'm Serb. With me is Broadway CJ on Play by Play. Thank you so much for joining us. And welcome, everybody. It is the long-awaited final, the conclusion of Season 21, and the third iteration of the Miguel Calzada Cup, where we have the number six seed, Manchester United, who made it into the Cup on the final match of the season, then end up taking down number three seed, Luton 5-4, followed by league champions, Liverpool 3-1 on aggregate. Standing in their way, Austin Villa. They got out to a big lead early against Newcastle. Almost blew it away just when everybody thought it might be over. And yesterday, absolutely putting their cleat on the throat of Tottenham Hotspur. As you heard earlier and can probably read above, I'm Broadway CJ. And along with me is one of the members of that Tottenham team that gave up eight last night to Aston Villa. I had to do it once. I'm sorry, sir. (laughs) How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Um, definitely excited to uh, move on from last night, but um, even more excited to see. I mean, it clearly last night was a phenomenal night for underdogs. And um, well, I mean, let's see if United can keep that momentum going. I mean, we saw we saw how incredible of a back and forth that 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 those two ties were, excuse me. And I mean, the same goes for Villa, just outright domination, um, just kind of trying to see. Who can carry more of their momentum and who can show up when it matters here tonight? And, you know, there's the one thing that has always irked me about the cup, and it's the lack of care sometimes in this. And you see a lot of people just calling it a participation trophy, when in reality, these last few years, it's not that in the slightest. This is something you actually have to qualify for. And it's basically the playoffs. It's what DPG does, essentially. And you got to wonder why people always don't take the most pride in it because from what I've seen right now, Man United has looked absolutely amazing over these last few days. They scored five against us in Luton, and i got to be real with you. Every goal they scored, aside from the penalty, was a high-effort play where they were either getting to a rebound, making a play to get a turnover, and it makes you wonder about some of these things, how things might have played out earlier in the season because, of course, we all know Man United trading for Thunder, right at the end of week three before the cup, as he wanted to make his way out of there, finally doesn't. He has made this Man United team look fantastic. I mean, like I said, they scored five against us, and then they go take down the defending champ, or the champions of the league this year, three to one. And so if, let's just say, let's talk prediction time. Man United finished sixth in the table. Where do you think they're finishing if they had Thunder all season? If they had Thunder all season, if they had the Thunder that, that showed up. I mean, in those two cup ties against you guys, I mean, I think that you could honestly put them top four, if not higher. I mean, we talk about how, how close it was. I mean, outside of, outside of Arsenal, unfortunately, but how close really the top nine teams were, I mean, title being separated by only a game and then having three, four teams in there that going into the final day of games really could have ended up taking home the trophy. I would say they should have, I mean, if they had Thunder all year, they definitely could have been in that title conversation and made, made my life as, as a member of staff that much more, that much more of a headache, you know? And one other thing, and I'm going to talk about just over Manchester United, and we're going to get to their lineup in just a second, then we'll start talking about the villains. Man United also, you cannot look past the work of their goaltender so far in these cup playoffs. And like I said, I've gone against them, so I saw it firsthand some really big saves and it's Amir in that he has been fantastic he he wants this cup and what do you think has led to his resurgence here in this cup run these last few days Amir's always been a big game player uh someone that you can count on someone that will show up when called upon um definitely has some off nights but I think I think pretty much everyone can say that they're guilty of that but you know, I mean, especially like it, it again. He's been standing on his head for this team, um, kind of, kind of helping to encapsulate what has been just an incredible show of passion for them in the in this uh, in this season's called Calzada Cup. Um, you know, I mean, and and it's a lot of it's a lot more of what you said as well, with the sense of United are pursuing these fifty fifty balls. More importantly, they're winning them. And, you know, in that, when you've got when you've got someone in a mirror that can make those difficult saves that can keep you in what was what was such a close cup tie and get you past 
the league champions. I mean, uh, there's no one else that you would want in that tonight. So one other point I just want to make a Manchester United before we get to their lineup. Again, like I said, this is a team that made the playoffs because of the last day of the season. And honestly, I might be the biggest reason for it. Last day of the season, we're playing Man United. We had just bottled it. I was in a really bad mood, as was most of the team. So I said, I just want to play striker this last game. I want to have some fun. And I ended up not getting striker. And because we started moving positions a little, TJ's in net. I'm playing any. And my any is an entire compy back line. Man United thrashed us 9-2. to Obviously, it was a joke of a game. They had a full 11. We had like six guys, and I was playing any on a full back line, maybe overalls. I mean, I did score a goal as a CDM, so I got my goal this season. Um, but talk about making the most of your opportunity. Just a team that very well couldn't have been in the cup. Now they're running rough shot through it. Right. right. I mean, yeah, and you got to take your opportunities where you can get them. Yeah, absolutely, and all credit to Man United. <laughs> just, just look at the Villa uh, Spur Cup tie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on now. Let's take a look at the – I sent you over them, by the way. I, let's take a yep. look at that Manchester United starting lineup, and we have it up on stream now. Also, thank you so much, Anfi, for sending me this graphic, and it looks really nice, by the way. They are running the 3-5-2 with Amir, Annette, Oscar, Anfi, and Chateau left to right the back line. Baca and Rubs, your defensive mids with Astro and Dennis out wide. Goon in the middle of the midfield with Thunder and Jaden on top. Now, sir, I'm going to ask you this for both teams. If Man United wins tonight, why? There's one guy that I'm looking at on this lineup more than anybody tonight, and that's got to be Chato. Um, arguably the best passing center back in the league this season. I want to say he was in double-digit assists. Uh, can't pull up. Can't pull up the stats on the site right now. Thank you, Tris. Um, but I want to say he was in double digit assists, man. And with how high Thunder likes to play up, I I remember uh, I remember giving him a little bit of flack for uh, cherry picking against us and during the uh, during the season. Um, those R one squares up to Thunder, man. Those are lethal if they can find the mark. And if that connection's on tonight, United definitely have a good shot at taking home the Calzada Cup. And that is something I have noticed myself especially as a goalie the amount of l1 triangles this year to just hit a streaking striker that is seriously becoming the meta you know it used to be the last few years low ground passes and then just using strength and physicality to burst your way through now it's been picking that precise moment to make that move and united's got one of the best back lines in the game when it comes to knowing when to pick that pass and with thunder again one more time he wanted to leave fulham and he's playing like it he looks like his old torino form when he was team of the season so moving on from Manchester United now let's talk about Aston Villa and for the rest of this pregame show Aston Villa of course they were the number four seed they took down Newcastle United in the first round they had a pretty sizable lead and then it came down to a one goal match and then yesterday of course the thrashing of Tottenham Hotspur getting up to an eight nothing lead and then you just ate to be them with the eight two final score Obviously, we don't have anybody from Newcastle in here, but right now, right now. But let me ask you, sir, what happened with Tottenham last night? What what was the reason for this? We just didn't show up. Um, players weren't weren't players weren't themselves. Um, you know, it, it's 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 hard to say when when it feels like you can't get a 50 50 ball your way, you can't get a save your way, you can't get anything your way. Um, but no, Villa came to play. They came. They came hot and they were ready for anything that we could have thrown at them. Um, and it was it was a lot of just stupid mistakes. But at the same time, I mean, that is not in any way to demean uh, Villa's skill. I mean, Saucy is arguably the best attacking midfielder in the league. I think he proved that during this cup, during this season. I think in his young career in LG, you know, he's definitely proving himself early on. Um I want to say he had a uh, I want to say he had a hat trick uh, in the first game against us. So definitely able to find the back of the net himself instead of just being that distributor for his side. Um, but honestly, if if I can move into talking a little bit more about the lineup here, um, my I'll eyes have to be on this back line. Um, I've never personally been high on King Fetz. I think he knows that I'm not very high on him. Um, and then. Pauletta on the right, Cancun Letta, can he show up and perform tonight when it matters? 
and um, div in net has been like Amir standing on his head all throughout this cup. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the goalie situation for men because it's been kind of strange with Villa. You know, the first two weeks, they when week two concludes, they're two points out of the lead in LG behind Luton at the time, one point behind Spurs, and it was given net the whole time. Then you notice that last week, Mando comes in, and just like us, just like Tottenham, they fell apart. So do you think that's the reason Div's in goal tonight? You got to ride the hot hand. Um, Div's been phenomenal in net for them. I even, even with his utility in other spots, um, I think, you know, after what Mondo showed and especially factoring in Mondo's not stateside still, he's, I believe in Hawaii. So he's playing on basically a red bar to begin with. Mm -hmm. So if you're banking, I know Mondo's a phenomenal keeper, but if you're banking on somebody playing on a hundred ping, you know, he's no D Sabathur. Yeah, and of course, we thank Mando for his service. Of course, I know we like to be memes in the chat a lot, but of course, he is doing the Lord's work for us. But yeah, it, it really is impossible when you have that ping. I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. I bought a TV with low latency because I was tired of lagging in Overwatch. So can you only imagine mm -hmm. what it's like to play goalie at that ping? Like, it's probably late reactions. There's lag in between. So no disrespect to Mando, when he's on his game and when he's got a good connection, one of the best keepers in LG. I always love going up against him head-to-head -head when he's had his absolute best. But for this Villa team, you know, I, I agree with you with Betts, you know. it's He's not the best center back in the league. He can be exploited, but he can also play a solid game when he's on. Of course, Rubinho, everybody knows him from his midfield play, but they're going to have him on that back line tonight. That back line is definitely going to be tested. And if they want to win this game, they're going to have to shut down Thunder, which, in, let's be reality, isn't easy. So with about two minutes to kick off, I have uh, Anfi's stream up right now. I am just waiting. And also, uh, thank you very much again to Saucy for providing me with the lineup for this contest. Let's talk predictions. Who do you got in this one? I can't pick a team. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, quite honestly, I'd love to see it go to pens as, as heart wrenching as that it'd be for both sides. I want to see what happens when both of these keepers get tested, man. I know it's no keeper dreams of going to penalties at I the do. end of the night, but I'd love to, I'd love to see what happens. I mean, that's, that's the difference between us. I love going to pens as attendee. I love playing those mind games because when you're a goalie going into penalties, you know you can't really lose. Like, you give up five goals, eh, who cares? It's penalties. They should score. But if you actually make a few saves in that, you're a hero. And you always will be. Right. Everybody never wants to take a penalty against you. I love the opportunity to go up against penalty shots myself. And um, I'm actually, since it's 8.09, actually, I'm just going to look, see if there's another stream potentially going up. But you got to give me at least one score prediction for tonight. If I have to pick, gun to my head, uh, give me Villa 2-1. You're going to say Villa 2-1? I was going to yep. say Man United 3-2. I think you're going to have – maybe if I'd say Thunder's going to score twice. Let me just make sure we got the stream up right there. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, let me – I'm just going to make sure. I have to switch it over to Saucy's because um, – Villa 2-1, and I think for me, Saucy and Zaki are going to score. We got Zachy saying, sir, better than SOCOM down in the comments. Any comments on that? Nope, I'm respectful. I appreciate that. All right, so we are just trying to get the... Appreciate the praise from Zach after uh, after showing some class and refraining from the shit talk last night. Yeah, I mean, that there definitely was the opportunity for shit talk, so props to everybody involved last night. I'm Trying to make my uh, stream work over here. Oh, Anfi is live now. Perfect. I can always do that. Do do do. As it looks like everybody is just line up enough. Sweet. There we go. So. Oh, actually, I just realized we were talking about Via. I never actually did went over their lineup exactly. So for Villa really fast in this one, it is going to be Fetch Munoz, Rubinho, left to right on the back line, Michael Kelly and Hezzy 
as the CDMs. Gibby and Portugal out wide. Saucy the attacking mid. Zaki and Fricky up front. And Div have in goal. Both teams running the same 3 5 2 formation. So as we wait for this one, and I'm going to keep looking at the comments. We got Cupid saying Thunder scoring two goals. Fricky with one. I'm going to say one of these goals is going to happen off a corner. I think um, you're going to get a big man heading it home. So I'm going to say just because he's streaming and he sent me the, um, uh, <laughs> just because he sent me the, whatchamacallit, um, link to use. I'm going to say Amfi gets one off a header and Thunder with two. Um, absolutely good luck to both teams. And, you know, this is, this is one you really should feel proud about winning, in my opinion, because this is the third uh, iteration of the Calzada Cup. Of course, a great guy, a true legend, and there's a reason we named this cup after him. When I won my, the first iteration of it, I just you know, it felt good to have that uh, cup on my resume, not more than any of the others, even the one we won together, sir, which I apologize for saying. <laughs> <laughs> The um, I also I have uh, I have someone reached out to me and said turn up your mic a little bit. Okay. For the stream. Gotcha, gotcha. Um. All right, I turned it up a little. Looks like we are loading in here. Yep, we are just about to get ready to go. I know it says V is the home team, but screw that noise. It's the Premier League. We are live at Wembley for the final, and it is the most uh, budget Wembley you'll ever see with about. 2,000 fans in attendance and 1,900 of them covered by TIFOs. Seriously, can we talk about EA for a minute? Why they had the TIFOs at the entire game? Who the hell is buying these seats to literally sit behind a TIFO all game? <laughs> all the other people in LG, apparently. Yeah, apparently. You got the blue sweep, but enough of the small talk. We are finally ready to get underway in the final of the Calzada Cup. Man United will kick it away. Moving right to left. We are underway. Red Devils control with some quick passing in the midfield. They move it down to the line. And now Oscar controls. They'll go back to the keeper, Amir. As Manchester United wanting to play that possession game early. A dangerous pass there trying to go up the wing. It was nearly intercepted. And now here comes Man United with those long attempts. Thunder has it on the wing. Stops. Puts the skill show on. Puts the through ball in. They're going to have a chance for a low cross here. Gooden with the skills. Trying to move towards the center of the box. But that pass was blocked by Robinho. Still fighting for it on the press is Man United. I'm going to need Anfi to stop hitting the touchpad and messing up my view. <laughs> as we finally have Villa on their first possession. Good pressure along the wing, but Saucy is going to come away with it. Moves it to Hezzy. A little management connection is now a good pressure attempt for Man United, and they're going to take it away here at midfield. Trying to get that quick attack going. Bakemono controls. Here comes the long ball over the middle, and it was going to be headed away. And now they fight for the second ball. It'll be Hezzy controlling in the midfield for Aston Villa. Saucy now. Finds the open man on the right wing. Portugal now finds Matt Fricky. Fricky's going to try to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. Tries the skills, gets it to Saucy, recycling it to the middle. Maybe a mistake of an air pass, but Zach finds some space. That gets it on the off and fires, and a save by Amir, jumping up to make his first save of the match. That's something that Zach is so good at, man. He's able to get to those 50-50s like almost no other striker in the league. That corner was taken quick and handled by uh, Austin Villa, uh, excuse me, and now, or excuse me, by Manchester United. As now Villa tries to start another counterattack as Zach takes the first attempt in this one. Man United with the takeaway. They're going to go up the right side. That play is on size. Now it's Jay. Stops, waits, waits for the man in the middle. Trying to put on some moves. Gets it to Goon. Recycling it to the middle. Pitch Bakamoto can step into it. Decides to pass it. Maybe one more pass. But Goon comes away with it. The shot is blocked. Loose in the box. And it's going to be Villa clearing it to the side and out of play. Game Bro. going both ways early, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted Bakamoto to step into that one. Just take a ripper right there. I think that's one too many passes. It's the cup final. Take your shot, my man. Man United with the throw in. They have possession, but a good takeaway by John. Jay takes it back for United. They're going to fight for it on the right wing. A two-on-one, but man, United still comes away with it shorthanded. Devil tries to dribble into the box. Another takeaway by John, and he's just going to clear this one out. And man, United can control this possession game, sir, it has really looked good for Man United so far. How does Villa break it? Villa just has to stay calm, play their game, you know, kind of buy into those those 50-50 balls. I mean, Zach is so good at getting in position for them, so, so able to predict kind of where the, where the game's going to be and be in that right spot at the right time. He's just got to keep interpreting that space, position himself right, and he'll find one. 
We are now into the 20 mi 20th minute of this contest. We have one save for Amir, but a big takeaway here by Man United as I'm talking about that. Great job by Hezzy to regain and take it back. But we've seen one shot on target by Villa. It was Zach being stopped by Amir. And then the other way, there looked to be an opportunity for Villa, but the shot was blocked. They're going to try for their second opportunity now, but the lead, uh, L1 triangle down the left wing wouldn't go. And Man United will just launch this one up the line. They're back in possession. They control off a few headers as Goon now his pass is blocked. And now maybe a counter attack for Villa. They have three going forward. Saucy has it in the midfield. Not really given it in the best spot by Zach. He's going to put it in the air. Back to get me over to the middle. Zach fires. He scores. Aston Villa strikes I first. Told ya. One I nothing. Told ya he was going to get one. He just had to find his spot. That was brilliant passing in the box. They get that little header to go headed to the middle. No shot for Amir on that one. It would have been a fantastic save if he could have gotten to it. But Aston Villa strike first. And now we're going to need to see that Manchester United team that they never gave up. You saw against Luton. They are most dangerous, I think, after they give up a goal because that's when they just start throwing everything forward. But right now it's Man United. Here they come. Thunder fires and equalizes. He's been taking that wow. short side shot ever since he came into this league. It still catches goalies off guard, and we're tied at one. Dare I say front post like he's Omar. That, Old heads will get that one. I mean, you know, if you have been in this league, you know that is Thunder's bread and butter. I don't think anybody takes more short side shots than him. As Zach is going to try now to just use some speed, burst up the middle here on the right side, tries to get it onto his left. Now rotates, but his shot was blocked by Bakamono. Still has it along the line, keeps it in play, and it's going to be knocked out. And it looks like it's going to be a corner for Villa. Second corner. Both teams looking so good attacking, man, this early. Second corner for Villa. They took the first one really quick, now taking their time here on the second one. As Saucy puts it in, Robinho has a chance. He can step into it on his left, but a horrible touch. And he's not going to be able to get the shot off. And now here comes a four-on-four four the other way. Goon goes down the right side. They're going to have a possession here with Devils. Can he get this one back to the middle? He holds it on his left. Anfi completely takes away the camera. And I have no idea what happened. Thank you, Anfi. <laughs> Gotta love a center back streaming. Freaky <laughs> dangerous there on the edge of the line, huh? There's, there's Freaky there with the run, but he is going to end up offside on that run. As, man, this, I said three to two, and I, I think that there could be more goals than that at this point. <laughs> if things keep up like this, sure. Quick free kick taken by United. They're going to try a tap pass, and now a long ball down the right side. Thunder's going to get on the end of it, heads it down to himself. He's pressured, double teamed on the wing, tries those skill moves to get someone. Now he finds Jay, tries to step over to his right, but a good job by John to take that one away, clears it, but it's still Man United in possession. On the left wing, it's Oscar. Waits for support, goes back to his back line and on feed, back to Oscar on the give and go. And now he'll try to move it up the wing to Astro. Tries to wait for somebody to make a run instead. Drops it off for Goon. Goon now is going to put this one in the box. Gunner gets it on his left. He might have a shot opportunity, but he couldn't control it off the touch. And once again, Villa just has to clear it. Man United still on the attack. Moving on the right wing, it's Devils. He's going to get pressure. John has been doing the Lord's work there on defense. Another takeaway for him. He's been huge. Phenomenal composure there from Owen Fee not to rush the pass. And right now, it's Villa. They took the early lead in this game, but right now, they're just trying to get their bearings. Anytime they touch the ball, and they just give it away right there. A bad touch, putting it out of play. Man United back on the attack, and they'll stay in possession here, a little deeper down the pitch. What is what is going on with Villa right now? They scored, and now they've lost all the momentum. Again, I think it's just it, with them and their, and their strikers, it's just a matter of getting in that right space, right time. You know, I mean, we know... Freaky and Zach are both LG proven. They just got to find their spots and they'll they'll bury it when they get the opportunity. But the opportunity has to present itself first. I think Saucy's got to. I think he's still getting a read on this defense. Once he gets that read, he will be able to unlock it. We are into the 45th minute of this first half, a 1-1 tie, and maybe one last chance for Villa here at the end of the first half. A pass was intercepted by Oscar, and now a good takeaway by Portugal. Last attack of the half coming right here. Pass to the middle was intercepted. It's going to be cleared out, and there is the whistle. That will do it for the first half of play of this Season 21 Cup. We are knotted at one as Villa took the early lead from Zach. Thunder equalized shortly after.
Yeah, again, I mean, going into halftime here, I think you got to get the ball in the hands of your Cam more if you're uh, if you're Aston Villa. I feel like Saucy's been so so critical to everything that you guys are doing offensively this year, and I don't want to say that it feels like he hasn't touched the ball, but offensively, I feel like it's always Freaky or Zach leading the line. You got to get the ball in the hands of your ten in this game. And the one thing I really am looking at from an Aston Villa perspective is. They're rushing when they really don't have to. They're trying to play Manchester United's quick attack counter game. The press really isn't there. They have time to build. They have time to set up their men. Why do you think they're rushing it so much? They're just looking to get back ahead and get back to playing their system. I think they're worried that they, they, they don't want to go to penalties. You know, they want to they ice it in, in, in regulation here. Well, we are back underway in the second half. We have at least another 45 minutes with you, Broadway CJ, on the play-by-play, -play, serve on the color, season 21 LGFA, the Miguel Cazana Cup final between the number six seed, Manchester United, and the number four seed, Aston Villa. Coming way out to play, this one is Divhab, dangerously just heads it forward. Saucy has it taken away from him on a double team, but he's going to win it right back and go to John. It was actually a foul, excuse me. And a quick take by Villa to move this one forward. Saucy with pace up the left side. Finds Zach. Zach dispossessed. A great job by Manchester United's right side. And they will clear this one. Div comes way out. He's in trouble, and he just clears it away. What is this man doing? Having fun with it out there, I guess. Oh, a scary moment right there if you're... <laughs> Oh, man, that was a scary moment if you are at the Villa. As he controls now in the midfield, drops it off to Rubinho. He's going to try a nice through ball to Freaky. Freaky moves oh, it to the middle no. for Saucy. Saucy heads it over the top, finds Freaky, fires on his right in the same by Amir. Slows behind him, and it's in! I think that might oh, have been no. tapped in as an own goal as Villa takes the lead again. It's 2-1. to one. And again, and it's Freaky just finding that right spot, right time. And that Getting was a bit of a friendly bounce, but it still counts the same. That was absolutely an own goal off the right center back for Manchester United. A completely unfortunate. That was Chato. And now we got Man United trailing again. Can they get another equalizer? Zach in control goes to Freaky. Great last ditch effort there by United to make sure they didn't let Freaky walk in. And this one's going to be cleared out. And now we're kind of seeing the reverse of that first half. It's now Villa with all the pressure as United just looking to get back on the ball. Like I was saying, man, Villa just had to get one, get back ahead. Then they get back into their system. It just looks like they're in flow state right now, CJ. As Man United will finally get possession back. You see Villa starting to press. But now United can attack with some numbers. If they can get this one down the line, what a great side tackle by Robinho as he takes possession back. Goes to Freaky on the right wing. This is Villa looking for the two-goal lead. Looking to the middle. Goon comes back. Nice work defensively there. Box to box as he takes possession away and now goes to Anfi. Anfi waits for the play to develop. No real press from Villa right now as we're into the 63rd minute of this one. Villa took a 1-0 lead. United equalized. And now it's 2-1 again for Aston. Devils tries to move it, but just uncreative. But they are going to take it away, however. This is Jay now on the right side looking for a crossing opportunity. Back pass intercepted by Gibby. And, sir, i got to ask you. Can Man United equalize this game without the long ball? Not without the long ball, man. They got to start getting lucky on some of them. I mean, that's how that's how Villa's ahead right now. No, I mean, you got to get lucky here. Chato not even looking for the long ball. You'll see shortly. Um, they got to get their system going. I mean, that's what that's what's putting Villa ahead right now. They're not playing their game. They're playing Villa's game. Here's a long ball right now, but it's going to be whistled for offside. And if they can't attack down the wing, of course, the strategy is get it to the middle, let the skills happen, but they haven't been able to get out of those corner positions. The support just hasn't been there. Villa now brings it in with Gibby. He's got it on the box to the top. Some opening for Hez. He gets it down to Fricky. He has space. He fires. He scores! Is that the dagger in the 70th minute? Fricky puts Villa up 3-1! to one. Incredible, incredible goal there from Fricky. Again, just got to his spot, shot, top bins. I mean, I think that I thought that initial pass to Fricky was a little too quick and he should have taken a touch, but give credit to Fricky. He was able to settle down and now Man United, they got to go. They got 19 minutes and they trail by two. This is Div trying to put the moves on and he is going to be able to clear this one away. It's now you got just Villa backing up and they're not going to let Man United get anything over the top. 
They've got to try and build on plays like this. Astro has it on the edge of the box. Left wing side tries to move it back to the middle of Bakamono. He skills his way back to Goon. Goon tries to throw it in the box, but again, just an ill-advised pass a little too early, and Villa can counter. Man United doesn't have as many numbers back as they're put committing forward. Moving down the right wing. Pass over to the middle. Great job by Goon to take it away. He's really played a good box-to-box -box game. And now Man United tries the counterattack once more. We are into the 77th minute. It was 1-1 at halftime. Villa has scored both in the second half to make it 3-1 in this game. Man United just looking for a play. They're still trying those long balls over the top, but Rubinho's going to handle that one easily. Thunder takes it away, but it's a foul, and Villa gets the ball back. 78th minute about to come to a close still 3-1 serb yeah and again you know that you know the saying keep it simple stupid i feel like united's just keeping it too simple right now you're not letting your dribblers work their magic it feels like you're forcing too many passes in here in traffic and they're just getting intercepted that was a and you want to talk about simple a very simple shot by thunder a moment ago we're now into the final 10 minutes Thunder has it, tries to make a move, spins, goes back to the right side for Robs. He's going to leave it for Devils. Devils wants to get down that wing, but instead puts a bad pass into a double team, and it's taken away by Villa. We're into the 83rd minute now, still a two-goal difference. Villa trying to put the cap on it, just bombing it deep and forcing Man United to build from their own third. Amir moves it quickly to Chateau. He came all the way to the touchline for that one, and a quick giveaway as Villa takes the ball back. Saucy now has some space in the middle to make a move. Instead, throws a long ball down the left side. Gibby looking to wrap this one up. Holds, waits for Man United to come to him. Circling around, killing some time, waiting for the pressure. It's finally dispossessed by Chateau. And now Man United tries again in one of their final few attacks. They got to get something here or this one's all but over. Thunder down the right side. He's got Devils. They might have an opportunity on the counter, but give credit to Fetsy. Perfect step up opportunity. Takes it away and Villa can clear it again. Absolutely phenomenal turnaround here from Villa. I mean, they they went down early, equalized, and I mean, you know, it they they like I said, they 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 got their system flowing and they've just been in control ever since they got back in front. I don't think Man United has had a a spell of the play even in the second half as we're into the final minute one last clear up the pitch we wait for the final whistle and the season 21 Miguel Casada Cup is going to Aston Villa 3-1 the final over Manchester United phenomenal performance from the villains here man freaky definitely showing up in the big game where he needed to Saucy able to pull the strings for them. And how about that back line from Villa, man? Definitely showing up when they were needed. And I'm going to try and let's try and see if we can get someone from uh, Aston Villa in here. Uh, I just messaged Saucy to see if he wants to join. Uh, maybe Div will get someone in here. Absolutely. Phenomenal game, though. Phenomenal game from both sides. And we talk about in this one, the first half, you know, that was dominated by Manchester United after they got that equalizing goal. And then, you know, it was Villa, like, they just had to get to the break. And once they got to the break, they were able to reorganize, they were able to calm it down. And then the entire second half was theirs. Like, I don't think there was a second in that second half that Man United was on the front foot. Exactly. I mean, like, it, I, I feel like I sound like a broken record here, but you play your type of FIFA, man, you're not going to get beat. No, absolutely not. And, you know, all credits to Villa. You know, they were looking to win a championship this season. They fell short in that final week. You know, they actually took the lead in the league after the first game of week three, but then they lost the next two and then just weren't able to get going. They end up finishing in fourth place overall. But they are going to get some – they are going to get some – silverware this season they do win the cup and i think the most important part of for the for via for this is you get some money after this one man that's going to be good in bidding next season that is absolutely true another thing that a lot of people do neglect to remember with this tournament is the winner of it is going to get some extra funds next season and if this <laughs> I asked Div to come on stream and he said, no, I almost sold the dub. You know, let's talk about that early on. Those crazy plays where he was coming up. If he makes a mistake right there, momentum's gone. Game could have been over. Right. I mean, it's 
I feel like this. I feel like FC twenty four has been a lot of who can make less mistakes. If you don't, if you get what I'm trying to say, and you know, Div did make that mistake early, but you know, able a, again, able to bounce back, able to hit the regain, lock in for that second half, keep his team, keep his team in there, and they ended up winning, winning the cup for it. Now, before we go today, Serb, of course, like we said, this was the conclusion of season. 21 of the cup uh, uh, and the cup as well what are we looking forward to now in season 22 like the direction the league is going what do you expect to see next season different at, or building on coming up in season more 22? close games um i believe we should see some scheduling changes haven't talked about that yet but um yeah they're just excited to get in get into another year of another year of lg new people new new owners new everything and um yeah, just excited to get more clubs in, man. Yep, it is. It's definitely something that I want to do as a staff member. I know I want to move back to maybe playing every team three times because the seasons are a little short. And, you know, I, it just feels better when it's the it's longer seasons. But that is going to wrap things up for us tonight, guys. For everybody here, for me, Broadway CJ, for my partner, Serb, congratulations to Aston Villa. They are leech or excuse me, cup champion. And now it's off to season 22. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Love y'all.